Yes, it's true. It's true. They jump from complex one onto CoQ. CoQ. The action can be quite intense when building proton gradients, and it's good for you when acids get oxidized. Protons pass through complex five, you see. You see. They do this to make lots of ATP. TP. The mechanism you should know goes through the stages LTO. So there's energy when acids get oxidized. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. A short one. Okay. Now you guys are in a better mood, I hope. It was turning a little ugly there for a moment. All right. Let's see. Let me get over here where I can actually where I can actually turn my back to you and do this, right? Okay. There's beta oxidation. Beta oxidation works two carbons at a time. Okay? Two carbons at a time. We break them off two at a time. If we had stearic acid, which has 18 carbons, we need eight cycles to break it down. Eight cycles, why not nine? The last one splits it in half, right? So there's only eight places where we break things. You can see eight places, right? The last one splits two and two and a half. So we get two on the last one. All right. So we go through that two at a time. Pretty straightforward. You'll notice in the cycle that I just showed you that each time I broke off a two carbon piece, I got an NADH and I got an FADH2. Then if I take that acetyl-CoA and into the citric acid cycle, I'm going to get three more NADHs and two more, oh, I'm sorry, and one more FADH2. A lot of energy. If I take all of the energy that's in a uh, palmitic acid. Palmitic acid has 16 carbons. It's the most common fatty acid in our body. Palmitic acid, 15, 16 carbons. And I completely oxidize it. I end up with something like 126 ATPs. The complete oxidation of glucose only gave me 38. And even if I account for the difference in carbon, 16 to, to, to 6, there's still more ATPs per carbon in fatty acids than there is in glucose. A really good exam question at this point would be, why? What's that? Absolutely. The fatty acid is the least oxidized form of the carbon. Remember how I talked about how its oxidation level depending on how much energy was available? Glucose has all those OHs on it to start with. The fatty acid is starting with CH2s. That's the difference. Okay. And let's see. What happens if I have a fatty acid that has an odd number of carbons? This doesn't happen very often, but it does happen sometimes. Most of the fatty acids in our body, as we will see, have even numbers of carbons, but a few have odd numbers. Some animals have more odd number carbons than others. Beef, for example, tends to have more odd number carbons. What happens? Well, we go through beta oxidation, beta oxidation, beta oxidation. We get down to a point where we've got a three carbon piece. And you say, okay, well you just split it in half, you get a two and a one. The enzyme won't touch it. So that piece that you have at that point is called propionyl CoA. Okay, there it is right there. That's what it looks like. The beta oxidation won't take this guy any further. So the cell has to do something with that propionyl CoA. The something that it has to do is very odd and I won't go through all the details, but suffice it to say, it converts it to a four carbon molecule. It rearranges it a couple of times, okay, ultimately into succinyl CoA. This guy can then go to the citric acid cycle and get oxidized. Now, what's the significance here? Okay? The significance is this rearrangement requires vitamin B12. One of the reasons you need vitamin B12 is to do this rearrangement to handle odd chain fatty acids. You need vitamin B12 for other things, but this is a very important one right here. Vitamin B12 is, is the only compound in our body, at least to my knowledge, that contains cobalt. Okay, uh, where are we at here? Unsaturated fatty acids. Oh man, we got a problem now. We got a problem that we're out of time. And I know you guys want to see this. How many want to see it? 
<laughs> we'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Yes, ma'am. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. So I have two questions. Okay, hit me. Do we need to know what this six carbon molecule is or just that it gets transferred? Which one? It, it's the first uh, the first decarboxylation and oxidation of the citric acid cycle. So well, the, six, the six carbon, that's, that's citrate that's, right there. That's citrate? Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This, this is isocitrate because you can see the OH down here. So this is isocitrate mm -hmm. to, okay, that would make so sense. So that gets oxidized that. to a five carbon molecule, which is alpha ketoglutarate. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I was, you even brought this up again today, but yep. I was getting confused. Okay. Where, where does this come from, the that's a poison that, that That's a poison that we give to, or we gave to wolves. Okay. And coyotes. And then that gets transferred into the fluorocitrate, which yep. is deadly for the aconitase because it stops the aconitase. Okay. Makes sense? In other words, all I'm doing is telling you here is why this is a poison. This is not a natural process. This is a poison. You're killing something. I'm telling you how it's killing it. Just like I was telling you how DNP would kill you. Yes. DNP is not a natural substance either. Okay, so this one is the fluoroacetate killing?